a bag of sweets, Agnes Sam. You would have thought the past three years had never happened the way my sister Khadija breezed into the family shop and stood beaming at me, radiating that glow that comes from knowing someone is surprised and overjoyed to see you. Like a good Muslim woman, her hair was tucked under a blue chiffon scarf. She wore a delicate peach lipstick, but her legs were bare. She had discarded the traditional trousers Muslim women wear with a dress. Looking at her, Standing there, not attempting to hide her delight at surprising me, nor her own joy at seeing me, I marvelled at all she had forgotten. After several minutes delighting in the joy of that meeting, her voice burst from her as if a hand clamped over her mouth the past three years had just been removed. Kaltum, she said, stepping forward to embrace me. Without thinking, I sidestepped, moving out of her reach. She knew I was never any good at pretending to be civil or courteous. Social niceties were never important to me. Khadija knew that. Safely behind the counter, I made a pretext of flipping idly through a magazine, the way I would have done if there was no one in the shop with me. I have to say this for Khadija. She was blessed with humility. She stepped up to the counter, folded her arms across the top, and began speaking spontaneously about how wonderful a man her husband was, how beautiful their baby looked, how homesick she was for our New Year's picnic at the beach, how she missed the things we took for granted, and how she missed me more than anyone else. It failed to move me. I felt as cold towards her as the last kiss I gave to anyone. Her hands, resting easily on the cold glass counter, were like a bird's wings, relaxed, yet with the potential for unimaginable flight. I could see those hands running across the keyboard, typing, playing the piano. Those hands had given her freedom. In doing so, they destroyed the people we loved. These feelings Khadija seemed not to share. She was insensible to the hurt I felt. She rambled on. The details of what she said I do not even recall. I was determined to meet her lack of sensitivity with a show of disinterest. Out of boredom, I repeatedly glanced at my watch. This didn't ruffle her. Finally, I turned my back on her and began weighing out bags of sugar. Our shop was small. There was one door, just one glass display case, and standing all round the floor space were sacks of rice, sugar and flour, propped up against drums of spices. Without asking, Khadija came around the counter and began to help me, still talking without interruption. I could not tolerate the natural way she did this, as if she still belonged with us, as if she had done nothing to hurt us, as if her bid for freedom had not destroyed her family. So I pushed her away. I pushed her away without malice, without calculation, without thought of the consequences. It was like spontaneous movement to brush aside the horror of one's other self. It was as I pushed her violently away and she reached out to stop herself falling that I noticed how much she resembled our dead mother. For a second I thought it was my mother I had struck. Khadija had finally stopped speaking. She was looking at me with a kind of waiting apprehension on her face as if she expected me to follow through with a slap to her face but the shock of seeing the resemblance unnerved me. We only stared at each other. She had no way of knowing what I was thinking. I expected her then to draw herself up and walk out of the shop, perhaps forever, the way she had walked out of our home three years ago. But three years ago, there was no cause for pride. Three years ago, I had wanted her to go for the disgrace she was bringing to our family. Yet I begged her not to go. I wanted to stand looking at her face, noting the eyes, the brow, the mouth that was so much like our mother's. And it seemed ironic that of all of us, she should be the one to remind me of our mother. Instead of saying that to her, instead of reaching out to hold her or sharing my grief with her, I reached up and pulled down the blinds of the windows, switched off the lights and moved to the door with the keys in my hand. Love is a funny thing. Khadija, her voice softened, smiling and vulnerable, said, I'll visit you again, Khartoum. Then she left. Over the past year, she had been calling at our home daily, without fail, knocking at our door, waiting like a stranger for someone to answer, smiling sweetly at whoever opened the door, asking if she could visit us. Now, now our parents were dead, just the way a stranger would have done. And throughout that year, we had quietly shut the door in her face, as if we were strangers. Each of us, her brothers and sisters, 
It was the most natural thing we ever did. The family had not discussed any plan of action. Each of us, when faced with Khadija standing at the door, felt we could do no more than shut it in her face. It was not that we could not forgive her for wanting the right to choose whom she should marry. It was the consequence of that freedom we could not forget. Our parents died within months of each other. Give Khadija her due. She was an intelligent woman. It seemed a shrewd thing for her to turn from visiting our home to visiting the family shop. And to her credit, she made no pretext of having come to buy anything. The family still refused to speak to her, some of us showing more hostility than others. Undaunted, she would stand alongside the counter, chatting to whoever was on duty in the shop, taking no offence that no one ever replied to anything she said. Instead, she conversed with herself, replying to the questions she posed and the remarks she made, and the conversation developed a style of its own. I had been closest to her, and I was now the obstacle to the rest of the family forgiving her. If I relented, Khadija must have known the rest of the family would welcome her home since I was the eldest. Believing this, she concentrated on visiting the family shop when I was there. This happened to be on Fridays. Our brothers were at prayer. When I realized that she was coming regularly to the shop while I was on duty, I in turn developed my own style of defense with meticulous attention to detail. I dusted the counter, swept the floor, polished the glass case, weighed out bags of sugar, rice and flour, while she conversed out loud with herself in her light-hearted, superbly acted way. I ignored her for varying moments of time until I reached for the window blinds, the light switch and the keys. At this stage, I would lock up the shop. But one day, as if in a trance, I reached for a fistful of sweets, placed it in a paper bag and shoved it into her arms as they lay folded across the counter. Khadija stopped speaking. Her face softened. Quietly, she closed her hands around the bag of sweets and left the shop. It was several weeks before I could bring myself to tell the family. They were astounded, my brother Abdul especially. A bag of sweets? They asked incredulously. Cheap sweets, I replied in an offhand way, my voice sounding flat, final, while I was cruelly delighting in the effect I was having on the others. They questioned me, registering their disbelief. Yet she comes back? Every Friday, I said emphatically. They didn't know how to interpret this turn of events, and I saw the beginning of a sense of wrong among some of them. Whereas before they were angry with her for what she had done three years ago and the effects of it, now they turned to criticizing her for persistently coming to us when we were rejecting her and forcing us into doing wrong. She shouldn't come on Fridays, they agreed. That makes me really sore, my brother said. She is a Muslim girl. She knows it's our custom to pray at the mosque on Fridays. But Khadija was married into a Christian family that was involved in voluntary work, fasting during Lent, eating fish on Fridays, and everything else Christian. My Christian friend said that on Fridays we should be more forgiving. That was why she was coming on Fridays. Abdul would not believe me. A bag of sweets. He kept repeating. You sure about that, Kaltu? A bag of sweets. Sure, I'm sure. Cheap sweets. You're pulling a fast one on me. Why a bag of sweets? Why not fruit or sugar? Flour? If you're weighing the stuff. It's what you do to a child, isn't it? To get rid of it, you give it a bag of sweets. She would leave in time, he said. I knew he would have forgiven Khadija the very day she ran away to marry the Christian boy. But he had to take his cue from our parents. It's like you would insult someone. Listen, you know that rich family who live in the valley? They're very generous to everyone, aren't they? But do you know what they do to someone who has spoken ill of them and then has the cheek to visit? He did not know. They dish up some food in a bowl, wrap it in a cloth and give it to the visitor. What does that mean? It's to say we will not eat with you. Eating with people is a big thing with us. The visitor goes soon after. I can see you want to make Khadija feel cheap, but why does she come back? She doesn't take the insult. She knows I want to make her not come back, but she wants to come back. Like a woman when she loves a man who beats her. After beating her, they make up. She forgives him. She makes excuses for why he beats her up. She says he's possessive. She says it's because he loves her, but can't control his jealousy. We sat pensively for a while. Perhaps it's guilt, he whispered. Guilt, I asked angrily. Whose guilt? My guilt. It's got nothing to do with me. I'm only a sister. It's what he did to... With her being the youngest sister, you were close to her. You think I was jealous? No, but she might have told you. 
instead of you finding out with all the rest, you were hurt. Maybe so. You must have been terribly hurt. I was silent. It isn't as if she turned Christian. She just married one. It might have been better if she had, he said. Turned Christian. I think turning is worse, much worse. Think how you'd feel. Poor Khadija, he said. Yes, now they don't want her and we don't want her. She should have turned Christian, he said. You think if she turned, they will treat her any different? Christians are funny people. If you throw your lot in with someone, it's no good keeping something back. She should have turned, he said. No, then we could never forgive her. She'll stop some day, he said. Yes, one day she won't feel to come. Still, I wouldn't come Fridays. I wouldn't come at all. But a bag of sweets, Khartoum? Cheap sweets. I can still see her face when I close my eyes. Her lips softened just for a second before she regained control. One Friday, Khadija did not come into the shop, although I waited for her past closing time.